what's up, dude? Hey, what's up, buddy? Not much. How's you doing? I'm doing great. Okay. So I wanted to chat with you because I uh -huh. noticed you passed around a bunch of information, and I and I've seen similar claims made before. Okay. But I feel like it's coming from, I feel like it's coming from a place of hate and pain, instead of a place of knowledge and information. I mean, um. So your so your 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 argument is essentially that you should never get married because the risks of divorce always outweigh the benefits of getting married, right? I don't think. Well, I don't, I wouldn't say never. Um, well, I isn't mean, that exactly what you said though? Or go ahead and tell me exactly well, what you'd okay. like to say so that. So basically, the idea is that um, for the majority of guys that. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. Yeah. Um, no the majority of guys that have basically, you know, they built a career for themselves and everything like that. Mm -hmm. They have a whole bunch of uh, things that are going on for them in their lives. And then you have the whole concept of kind of like marriage, which is essentially, if you think about it, I mean, it's effectively, um, you know, signature. I mean, that's really what it entails in terms of behavior style and signature. And there's a whole bunch of legal and financial aspects to go with it. So, I mean, um, judging from what I have seen, um, in terms of like personally, I mean, I'm not going to go into details of like my own personal life, but what I've seen is that it's, it's, if there's like a benefit associated with it, I mean, I guess you don't really either hear about it much or people just kind of think that it's normal. But then when you do hear about people like majorly getting fucked over, then it's like huge, huge thing. Like I was working with a guy who pretty much, you know, he was, you could tell every day he was pretty much destroyed to the point where he would come in and every time you come into his office, he'd be like, you know, just you could tell that something was up with him um, financially, uh, morally and everything like that because of primarily the finance system. There was like kids involved and everything like that. So it's just kind of one of those things that personally, I just feel like it's not really a good idea for general men to be looking at marriage. I mean, okay, I, I so would say it's like, because you think because you think, you know, one guy that maybe got fucked over possibly by being married Maybe we're not even sure on the details of that. Then marriage is always a bad idea. Well, I would say that I don't know about it. I mean, I know, like I said, I'm not going to details, but I know specifically what happened and like what he um, kind of how he get fucked over. And it was like, okay, so how did he get financially? How did he get fucked over? So <clears throat> he basically, I mean, it was a kind of like the thing where first, you know, they did the whole thing where he married somebody where they she was in a lower income tax bracket. Or not the income tax, lower, um, excuse me, salary. And then they were all getting tax benefits because he was making much more. But then um, I guess, I, I don't know the, like, the emotional details particularly, but what happened is eventually they grew apart. They started a lot of friction happening. And then he basically, now he has to pay like child support and alimony over the course of like 80000 a year, approximately, I guess, you know, somewhere around that from what I know. And that's, I mean, if he was, he wasn't making like, you know, huge amounts of money. So that it really devastated him financially, partially because I think like whatever they had an argument or something like that, like that. But it definitely uh, happened to the point where, I mean, he got the shorter end of the stick. So, okay. So wait, so did they have children? Yes. They had two children. Okay. Was she working while they were married? She was working, but she was making a lot of us. Like how much was she working? Uh, full-time job i would say but she was I, I don't know like it was like not paying any more than like 30 30 40k a year or something like that where he was making into like the 90s and hundreds so he's making 90k a year and now he's paying 80k a year in child support no this was back before back before when i was married he is pretty pretty high up now he's in the 150s 170s like his you know managerial position but he um part of it was because of his high salary too like that's that's kind of how it happened to court so, I mean, that's that's what he told me, but um, that's kind of just, I guess, my personal experience. But, I mean, in terms of, like, you can't, I don't think you can really deny that it does happen to other guys where they do get kind of fucked over in terms of, like, just generally losing, like, half their salary, effectively. Well, the problem is I don't think a lot of people understand, like, what the point is of alimony or child support. like Right, but the, the idea is that, I mean, I understand, like, so, I mean, like, this is the way... I understand it and I always understand it uh, or understood it in the past is the fact that, you know, if a guy is making like, say, 150K and then a woman is making like zero, right? Just say at home mom, whatever. And then when they get divorced, it's only fair to say that the, 
woman now is kind of sort of kind of entitled. Not, it, I mean, obviously, it's not going to be half, but she's kind of sort of entitled to half because she wasn't making anything, so she didn't have time to develop a career or anything like that. So, I mean, that's the way I understand it, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Okay. So the difference, though, is like, <laughs> let's say that if a woman, like, for example, let's say like you marry somebody and they have a career, right? And then they can say like, okay, well, they, they're just going to be a stay at home mom. Right. So let's just say I, I just, the woman just has to quit her job and stay home mom and take care of the kids. And the guy continues like making his career and everything like that. Well, when they get divorced, I mean, the mom can effectively still, or the woman can still effectively go back to you know work and make even more money. But the alimony is going to be based on the fact that she was working, which I think is what happened in his case, but I'm not sure. But he, um, I do know from from the details that we talked about that he he was the the amount was that high because he was making a huge amount of salary, and even then it still kind of sucks in terms of like I mean he's still he's not like a bad father or anything like he definitely pays it and provides for his kids, but I think like it's not eighty k worth of you know providing to his kids like I don't know like I feel like it's just one of those things that if you make that much and then you split and it you know and especially if it's like not your fault splitting which in his, in his case it was definitely not it was just the wife had some other plans um you know to do so but i think like and and if you do that and then you kind of get fucked over like that i think you kind of got the short end of the stick i mean even if i grant you all of this it sounds like this is an exceptionally bad case but you're making it sound like this is the norm for everybody that gets divorced therefore no one should ever get married because men always get fucked like well, I, okay, so I'd never, uh, okay. So, I mean, that's kind of, that's the reason why I took issue with what you said. It's because you were generalizing them pretty hardcore that like, well, you were saying that general, guys should never get married because they always get fucked in a divorce. Um, I would, well, statistics on the average, if you look at, and that I'd link to, I think one of the articles in the, um, one of the posts that are replied, I mean, the statistics show pretty much that it's like hardcore bias towards the guys in terms of they're the ones that end up paying the most yeah but so, don't men also make the most um there was an article somewhere that i that i mean you could probably look this up and i can find it but it was like in i think 40 percent of households women are make the most money but like alimony only gets awarded to men in like three percent so wait i'm sorry say that one more time here, let me just link you the article so you can read it real quick. Well, no, because okay. I, I I read the one that you linked, but but all of those well, stats, I mean, like if men are a, in general making more, um, and also the um the 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 argument that was made in that article, I already know because I read it. The argument that was made in that article wasn't that you know men always get fucked. They said that sexism from the judges might be a case, but there's also the fact that a lot of men are just too embarrassed to ask for child support at all. I mean, uh, I mean, I think I almost feel like that's a different argument but okay i mean because then you start to get it's like well did you do everything right you know did you do everything right in the divorce i mean sure like let me let me just say this because um i agree that okay so i will go back and i say like yes i was wrong in the sense of saying that you know it's probably a bad idea for every man because it's not like it realistically it's not that bad but i think generally generally i don't think that men should be looking specifically for marriage in a sense that, um, or at least they should have a huge understanding of what financials are involved and should take that risk very, very generally into consideration. Because I don't think a lot of people do. Does, I mean, just, I don't know how else to phrase it. Like, I mean, I'm not you're like, going to sign a like prenuptial surprised. agreement or something if you're really that uh, concerned about it. Uh, I mean, I, I've heard that those can get kind of fucked, screwed over by the courts. But what, how, what do you mean? I don't know. I don't know enough about this, but I feel like uh, there. I've read plenty of articles that they say like a court can just say prenup is not fair. Like if I, if you make a prenup that says like, hey, like in case we get you know divorced, uh, I still get to keep like ninety percent of the money, and a court and court can just say, well, that's not actually fair, so they'll just throw it out. So I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but hmm. I know I know it works more with like property stuff. Like if you own property, and you say like. Well, I get to keep all the properties if we get divorced, and the court will say like, "Yeah, sure." I mean, it was your property, but like in terms of salary, they still they're still just gonna still gonna award it to the woman. So the article I was talking about, um, one second, I'll link it to you in Skype. Uh, God, where the fuck was it? Oh, here it is. 
the fuck is Chad and Spade? This one. Anyway, so, like, I'm not, like, super, super hardcore. Like, I mean, it was, like, I'm not, like, one of the Trump people that you talk with. Like, I'm not, like, oh, my God, if you get fucking married, you're fucking retarded. Like, all the shit. I'm, I'm just generally think that, like, for, for what I've seen is um, generally not a good idea. I mean, it's also, like, the fact that I'm a little bit biased, too, I guess, because um, my hobby is, like, I race bikes and shit, like, on the track. Um and there's a lot of guys there that obviously make a good bit of money and a good portion of them are divorced. And I just hear stories like how they're always complaining about how they have to pay all that shit. Now, I granted, some of it's probably fair, but it just seems like there's never a case of like a guy getting divorced. And then he makes like all this alimony from the fact that the you know his wife is making so well, much. Well, that's more, really like, rare because typically men are the guys making all the money. It's very it's much more rare for a man to stay at home while the woman <laughs> chases a career. So I mean obviously I guess well, like the the worry is that it sounds like a lot of what you're talking about is falling into like cognitive biases like, well I'm in a place and I know a lot of people and a lot of them have divorces and maybe some of them are fair, but I don't like it sounds like you're making a lot of assumptions here to play into a particular argument. Um, I mean, the article says that like 40% of households are headed by female breadwinners. I don't know how much, I mean, that seems to be Forbes, so. Yeah, I guess so, like, this, like, the problem I have with this article is this is a really, I, I mean, um, I mean, we can kind of go through it and I'll read it and, and listen to my problems. Like, this is like really, really, really bad, um, some of these numbers seem really bad. So, of the 400,000 people in the United States receiving post-divorce spousal maintenance, just 3% were men, according to census figures, yet 40% of households are headed by female breadwinners. But that number doesn't really tell us anything. What we need to know is what percentage of divorces where there were female breadwinners occurred did the men end up not receiving child support, right? These two numbers are actually completely and totally unlinked, so I don't know why the author I mean, would start off. Um, right? I mean, they are unlinked, but I mean... Like, if you, you, wouldn't you think that'd be more, like, I... I don't know what to think, but the, but when you're yeah. making, but the problem, the whole point of doing a research article like this, like, you would never present an article like this to, like, a professor so, or something, and when the professor's like, well, these numbers don't really line up, you go, well, but wouldn't you think that's how it would work? Well, no, the whole point of doing research is to get an actual answer, not an answer based on intuition. So let me kind of explain it. Well, let me ask you this question. So, like, we, when you talked about the benefits, like, what specifically are you talking about? Just, like, as you mentioned, like, legal financial benefits. Um... There's, I mean, for tax purposes, there's a ton of uh, benefits there. I mean, if you want to go over all of them, here well, you go. Well, just, just like generally, like the ones off the top of your head that you know. Uh, off the top of my head, I know that there's a lot of shit related to medical related stuff. Um, I know that legal and joint property rights and joint um, accounts and shared uh, assets and stuff like that. I know there's a lot of strange stuff, stuff that goes on um, in, in terms of marriage stuff. Um, I, I mean, like here's a, there's a Wikipedia article. There's over like a thousand some fucking provisions for people that are married um, okay. For the different benefits that they receive for being married, this is one of the people why gay. This is one of the reasons why gay people make such a big deal about um, about uh, not being allowed to be married but getting civil unions because civil unions don't get all the same benefits that actual marriage does. Okay, so um, if you have, let's say, like without going into like, because there, there's a concept of um, reality, right? Like, there's we can argue about like hypotheticals left and right but there's a you know in reality stuff happens and people that get married and everything like that but without like taking that into account um if you look at for example just the benefits involved right like from let's say just from a financial standpoint well okay you might save a little bit on taxes right i mean there's like i guess you can might be able to get a lower mortgage rate all of those add up but let's say for example that you know you do end up you know getting divorced and then you end up having to pay like a whole amount of alimony for like pretty much almost I, I don't know how long does alimony usually last is it for the rest of the life i don't think it's for like fuck i didn't know. um sorry i don't think it's for life okay well anyways let's just say for like a long period of time right mm -hmm. so i mean financially if you just like subtract those two numbers together i mean you basically have you have a risk you know analysis type of, or you have like a risk analysis type of thing well is it worth it or is it not worth it, right? And yeah, but I mean, I get it. But again, your you, like your risk analysis there is is operating under the assumption that all alimony and all child support is completely unfair, and if some of it is rightful, rightfully well, okay, earned, so, then I mean, so unfair. So okay, well, a child support, I, would, I mean, that's pretty straightforward, right? Like you're you're going to be supporting the kid no matter what, and if the 
woman has custody, then you're obviously going to be paying her. But like alimony and stuff, like, I mean, is it, I, I, I don't necessarily, even, I mean, I agree in some cases it's fair, but like, I don't necessarily think that it's like, just because you have to pay alimony doesn't mean it's like completely right. I mean, there's I cases where, for example, um, the guy pays alimony and like some of it goes towards the wife, some of it goes to, or alimony and child support, and some of it goes like towards the kid, but like a good portion, the wife gets to keep for herself. Right, like, okay, I mean, wait, hold on, wait. You know that alimony and child support are two completely different yeah, yeah, things, Yeah, yeah, right? no, I know, but, like, okay. the total, keep... sum, the total okay. sum of everything, right? Like, because you can't really control that. I mean, if you if you pay, give a certain amount of money to check, right? Like, if you, like, let's say $100 towards child support and the wife only spends, like, 20 of it towards the kid, I mean, she can use the 80 for herself. I don't know what the legal repercussions are of that, but, I mean, I'm sure that happens. I know it happens because the guy did work. I mean, I mean, he has no reason to really lie to me, but... That's exactly what he told me, that a lot of it, money goes for her own personal uses instead of just, like, the child, so. So what? I don't know, man. So, I, I mean, the state is the one that determines how much it costs to raise the kid, no? Like. Yeah, yeah, but, but the, again, what I'm saying is, like, if, like, so let's just say I'm in a pretty wealthy, affluent area, right? And it's a lot for to raise a kid because, like, the cost of daycare and everything like that goes up, um, you know, cost of living and everything like that. So if you pay child support, but... Then the wife goes and says, okay, well, we're just going to move somewhere to where it's, you know, cheaper, for example. I mean, you have to fight then another protracted legal battle to get that lowered. And, I mean, all of that accrues lawyer costs and everything like that. I mean, there, you can't argue that there is, like, there isn't, like, it's a not a foolproof system, right? I mean... Well, it's not a foolproof system, but the pro the reason why people always get so hung up when they're talking about all of this is that... The, the, when the when the courts are doing this, the courts aren't usually trying to determine what's quote unquote fair between the man and the woman. Usually, they're trying to do what's in the best interest of the child. <clears throat> so, oftentimes, mm. the, they're going to leeway. They're going to lean on the side of caution for right. the one but who I has mean, the child. And if women more often than not have the child, I mean, it seems kind of like yeah. But I mean, the, again, it goes back to the whole thing where if you have a child and the woman gets custody of it after divorce, and then you have to pay child support. Plus alimony. Well, how do you know that like all of the money that you pay towards child support is going to go towards child support and not like half of it go towards the child and the other half of it as like just play money? I guess. Well, I mean, if you think the child is being mistreated or abused, then I mean, you can always call Child Protective Services and then go to re rolling down on custody arrangements or whatever if you think that that's like a legitimate concern. Yeah, but I mean, it's like what so let's so go back to the example of the affluent area right like if the court determines hey it's a lot to raise a child because like if you basically i guess the reasoning goes like this if the child was with you and you both were making the money then you know the combined income of like for let's take my public example for like 240k would make mean that that kid is like has a pretty damn good life you know like whatever like wait if what say that again if if the, the my coworker was still together with his wife okay and you know, they had a kid, and it's expected that, that kid would have a pretty baller life, like pretty much, you know, because you the coworker makes a lot, so for 240k combined, the kid would have like you know a good amount of money invested into him, like best schools, okay, best whatever. So when, as soon as they get divorced, and the courts can say like, all right, well, let's say if you know now that you're divorced, in the best interest of the kid, like it's wrong to punish the kid, so we're gonna assign a large amount of child support payments so the kid can have that life, even though the wife has custody. So with that regard, if you have that sort of arrangement, then what I'm saying is like the kid could have like a normal life. Like he doesn't have to have expensive toys and anything like that. But because of the fairness of the how the courts assigned the system with that parent fairness, then the, basically the wife gets extra money effectively. I mean, that's the way I see it. Is but, that the way that alimony is actually determined, though, and child support is actually determined? That's what my understanding of it was. I mean, the... I've never heard of a case where because the like the woman gets custody and she makes a lot less than the child is expected to have like a lower quality of life. I mean, there it, from from what I've seen, I mean, my coworker is just one example. But I've, I've known that some other people, too. It's the, the alimony and everything payments get determined based on like what the combined salary would be pre-divorce. That's the way I see it. I guess first, I never remember this happening, I guess, because I pay child support. And it seems to me that when we did it, they <laughs> literally just factor in um, the income of both parents and then how much income is, quote unquote, Wait, needed. Right. But you were both, I, were you both making this like approximately the same amount of money? <laughs> no, I was making 100K and she was um, making 20 or 30, I think, maybe 25 because she was working part time. 
Okay. Well, I mean, if you, I don't know how your legal proceedings went, but I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, for at least for my, the case of my coworker, I mean, she ended up with a lawyer, a very good one that was in his best interest to get her as much money as he could, because that would have directly go into his fee. So, so he ended up getting the house. That was his thing, but does the mother have 100% custody of the children? Uh, she has the main custody, and then the father has visitation rights. Oh, so is something else going on here? Or? I don't know. How I mean, does how does because in order to get that kind, that makes it sound like the dad fucked up or something bad happened. If he lost that much custody, <laughs> if, I mean, I have I, I don't know, but well, that that's an important part because we I have joint custody with with um we don't I don't even think we have a formal custody arrangement like we can we both get to see him on whatever terms we want. But ten, generally, generally the judge will push to do shared custody between two people. The judge, again, in the best interest of the child, which really makes some people ass pain because if somebody cheats or whatever, they're always like, oh no, I want still custody. Generally, the judge will rule in favor of joint custody because two parents in the life of the child is better than one. So if the if the dad is has lost his custody to the wife, that makes me think that something different is going on here and I it's mean, not just a straight up. He, I, 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 I don't feel... Like I can make a statement whether he did. I personally don't think he did anything wrong. Knowing the character of the guy, because I well, knowing no, the character of the guy, like time. you're his friend. I mean, have you ever been yeah, his yeah. child before? Yeah, like we, um, yeah, I helped him set, get set up with like a motorcycle and we've ridden together and stuff like that. So wait, we so you haven't him. been his child before, right? I, I have not been his child before. Okay, so how could you possibly know? What I kind don't of... know. That's what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just making a best guess. So, but I, I don't know. You're right. Like you, it could be that he fucked up. Um, but. Well, because, I mean, that changes a lot of this conversation pretty significantly because it seems like right, you're basing but, a lot of your experiences and feels on this, on your friend's example. Uh, but, no, I mean, from the for guys that I, like, that I raced with that I know that got divorced, I mean, I'll, most of them, from what I've heard, that kind of conversation, a lot of the, the, with the kids, some of them did get, like, the equal custody where, you know, it's half time pretty much, but salary essentially gets split in half for, like, alimony and child support. That's That's the general thing that I've, so far as what I know. Because I haven't seen anything where they say like, oh, just because you make less, that means you have to, you get less money from the start. Like if the guy was making, you know, like 100K and the one was making 20K, then it'd be somewhere in the middle of like, the kid is expected to get like a share of the combined salary. So the guy would always have to pay more. I guess I would be interested, I guess in your case, I don't know if it'll happen or not, but when people are sharing anecdotes like this, they tend to exaggerate. I would be really curious in seeing the actual court papers and the actual judgments like from the court for what is supposed to be paid and, and who's liable for how much R rather than yeah, like I mean, well my friend said that you know like he's yeah. got to pay half his money or whatever like i seriously doubt that no i mean i agree like my example is definitely anecdotal but sure and um, i mean i and i can counter all of this with my own anecdotal because i divorced from my first wife and i don't pay any alimony to her we never did any of that and then i'm paying child support right now but i'm totally happy and fine with that arrangement so I yeah mean, the only thing the only thing i know I know from, well, actually, no, I wouldn't even go too far to say that because, again, it's going to be, uh, everything is basically word of mouth. I mean, I have a good reason to trust the guy, you know, but I can't really, in this type of argument, I can't really put that as evidence. So if I if I'm somehow managed to get the papers, I'll, I'll send you a message, but sure. I don't think it's going to happen. But, um, but generally, generally, my general sentiment, I guess, on um, this entire thing is like, I think that if I were to rephrase my original comment, I mean, it was kind of meme -y. I, I do see it now. I mean, I just kind of typed it up. But I still think that, like, marriage is something you, every single guy should be, like, highly, highly cognizant of. Like, make sure that you're making, like, the right decision and everything like that. Because the, the repercussion, I mean, knowing what it did to the guy, I mean, he's, he's kind of, like, emotionally destroyed just because of the fact that, you know, the finances and everything like that. How he has to, like, pretty much scrounge a lot of money now just to pay that much. So, um, yeah, I mean, if that's actually true, if that's actually what's going on, if he's struggling to make ends meet as a result of how much alimony shit he's paying, he should probably contact the, the state and, and get like a re-ruling on his shit. Like you can do that. Well, you can renegotiate your child support if you go to the state and incomes have dramatically changed or something, or if you have like a failure to, to meet your responsibility or whatever, like, yeah, I mean, he was, I guess, I mean, I, I don't know the specifics. I've never personally been through any of that, but, um, I just, like I said, all my stuff is kind of like, it, it is very anecdotal in the sense that, I mean, I all have, I've never really seen actual papers or really heard of it, but I do have 
a whole bunch of people that I personally know that have been through like divorces and stuff. And I kind of, that's kind of like my general idea of um, where I get all, it's kind of sort of all my information from. So it's definitely more than just that one friend. In the, in the other cases, they're not as severe, but for the most part, it's it seems like, you know, the guy always gets the shorter end of the stick. Gotcha. So, so that's pretty much it. But I mean, like I said, like I, yeah, like I, I don't think like any guy should not get married, but I think it's just one of those things that it's very, very, very easy to just go down the wrong path. Especially, I mean, the, I think divorce, I think divorce rate statistics are like falling, but it's still pretty high. Last time I looked it up, but yeah, and then a- average marriage age is like what? It's like twenties, and then the divorce divorces happen in like thirties, I think, like that, or some shit like that. So, and that's right where the guy is like, you know, essentially building up his career. Because by the time he's like 30, 35, he's established and pretty much has all the stuff. But like that period between 20 and 30, there's a lot of shit that can go wrong. So. Okay. Well, hey, it was a good conversation, buddy. I would be a little careful on all the anecdotal stuff. I don't think that nobody should get married. Although it sounds like I don't think you're quite saying that, right? Yeah. Yep. Like I said, I'm not super hardcore up like the Trump people you talk to. Sure. All right. Well, hey, good luck, buddy. Thanks for the conversation. All right. Peace out, man. Right.